Please forgive me, it's been a while since I uh, last spoke publicly like this, so I'm a bit out of sorts. They say that everybody has a story, well here is mine. I am both anorexic and bulimic. Up until a couple years ago, denial prevented me from admitting this. At the age of 16, I began to rest restrict myself with food. Being overweight and labeled fat most of my life did not make for a solid foundation of confidence to stand upon. I began slowly by cutting out snacks, which at the time was no easy feat for me. I counted calories, I ate privately so I could throw away food. Special occasions such as Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter were utter hell for me because I knew I would overeat, I would get full, and I would absolutely hate myself later for it. At 17, I still struggled with my weight with minimal progress. At the time, I noted down in a journal that I kept, one day I would be slim or I would die trying. Little did I know then that this was a possible reality for me. At the worst, I weighed 220 pounds. Supposedly for my age and height, I was simply considered a little overweight and husky. But to me, the dark pink stretch marks and love handles were daily reminders for my determination to try harder and to persevere with what I defined as dieting. And so I continued at it. It began as a struggle, but soon I taught myself to starve for three days straight. I couldn't go much longer than that. Soon this became a routine for which I took a sick pride in. I was finally in control. I couldn't control the world around me, but I could at least govern myself and change myself to my own liking and approval. I found it difficult to sleep. I couldn't concentrate in school, and that showed. But the scale kept me in line. If I wanted to go for coffee or go to a movie or whatnot, I would simply just have to weigh myself first. If I didn't like what I saw, then I would stay behind. How often I would get lost in the numbers I saw, and I'd feel elated but that would soon turn into accusing the scale of lying just because I was afraid to enjoy the numbers that fell in my favor. Over the course of several months, I lost a lot of weight. I went from being 220 pounds to 200. Then I was at 190, then at 170. Soon I realized I was just unhappy being slimmer in the head than as I had been when I was bigger. I should have considered then to just stop where I was at and be unhappy, but at least be healthier, and begin working on how to feel better about myself but by then it was too late. I was obsessed with reaching my target weight of 120 pounds, even if I died trying. <coughs> by the time my skin began to alter between shades of yellow due to my kidneys acting up, I was 130 pounds, and as slim and sick as I subjected myself to be, I was extremely happy. I finally defied the Smith curse of being fat. I was content with the run status among family and friends, even if my, hate, even if my height towered over most of them. Regardless that rumors began that I had AIDS, Regardless that my ideal objective was become good looking, but in all actuality I looked ill and like crap. Regardless of declining <coughs> grades, negative attention, and sincere concern, deep down I convinced myself that if anyone had a clue how wrong it was to feel fat, they would not dream of asking me to stay that way. They would say, gee, I didn't know. It's okay to starve yourself. Throw away that food. Throw it up if need be. Do whatever it takes for you to feel like a normal human being. But I didn't care about the consequences because they couldn't be half as bad as gaining weight. I was diagnosed anorexic. My doctor told me this was a dangerous lifestyle, that this was not a way to live, but a way to die. I passed this off as mere scare tactics, that death did not drive a wedge of fear in my addiction. I was determined and quite willing to walk over all those who opposed me. I pushed family and friends away as I began to witness my ribs and hips protruding. My hair slowly began to fall out little by little, and I was desperate to consider myself good looking. Years passed, and soon I tried to starve myself for a couple days at a time simply to lose weight <coughs> for eating something the size of an appetizer. I grew impatient with this, so I began to take matters into my own hands, literally. I began to purge. Countless times I would go to a fast food outlet like McDonald's. I'd spend about $50 just on food. I'd bring it home, gorge it down, and throw it all up. To me, this was a loophole. I cannot imagine how much money I threw away simply on throwing up. But soon I found this method of binging and purging kept the scale balanced, often going back into my sick favor. It became a thrill for me, a stress reliever, my prime tool to dieting, my skeleton in my closet. Soon enough, I was throwing up between three and four times a day, and soon I found that I didn't require the assistance of my finger anymore. I could simply purge 
because I had done so much damage to my stomach, <coughs> but I was good at it. I sought counseling, but I only met opposition by repeated scare tactics. I tried group therapy, but again, I was the only guy in a room full of women, degrading the men in their lives as the root cause of their problems. Now I accept the facts that eating disorders do affect more women than men, but it sure was not easy being a guy in a room with my position with people who could not relate to me. Soon I was labeled gay, because as many like to put it, men are just not as concerned about their appearances as women are. I found solace in confiding in friends and the ever ongoing support of my mother, who never gave up on me. But soon, but even still, I let my mother get so close and kept her most at bay. Before I began to work daytime here at the Salvation Army, there were many nights I sat down with clients in the evening here in the shelter. Talking to men and women alike, I have often been asked if I have an addiction, and I have always said yes, and I have explained why. Often I would get perplexed looks, surprised that food was my problem. I found that it often came down to this, that they could not understand why I chose to throw up food any more than I could understand the likes of injecting a needle in the <coughs> tissue up. It's not that we enjoy doing it, but by doing so it results in some sort of satisfaction. How we do it is simply the means of getting the high we want. I wake up most mornings craving to eat and purge. It's an ongoing reality, one I can now deal with in a healthier manner. Facing this battle head on is one of the hardest things I've ever had to live through. Knowing I had to change my ways was as if to be told a part of me had to go, <clears throat> like getting an arm amputated or something like that. To this day, I have constant triggers. The phase are the worst. I see others eating at times and I feel jealous. I get antsy and angry and I shut people out. I experience a range of feelings that many have told me they as well go through. But my recovery is progressive. I have good days and I have bad days. Work keeps me busy and focused, and when I'm at home, I have an extraordinary wife who is loving and supportive, committed to making me smile and know that she loves me for me, regardless of my weight or appearance. I have a young daughter who keeps me on my toes. They both love me for me, even when the inevitable day comes that I realize that one day I am old, fat, bald, and wrinkled. <laughs> my wife married me, a man with a past <coughs> with a very unhealthy problem, and she doesn't hold that against me. She does not judge me, and that has made a world of difference to how I feel and see myself. She's my equilibrium and makes every day for me happy and healthy. Thank you. Right on, Rob.